بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد the prayer and the time for the salat is azim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated the salat as the second pillar of Islam and the one who leaves the prayer as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man taraka salat fakad kafara whoever leaves the prayer has disbelieved letting us know that salat is something we can never afford to leave off in our lives so it's important to have an idea about the time frame for the prayer and the conditions for the prayer and the sifat or the characteristics of the salat of the prayer and i wanted to read a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which clarifies us clarifies for us the most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this relates to the issue at hand which is the salat and one of the conditions for salat is the time the time to pray the salat during its proper time and that's one of the conditions for a sound and correct prayer and The prayer, regardless of whatever prayer it is, whether it's the Fajr prayer, the morning prayer, or the Dhuhr, the midday prayer, or the Asr prayer, or the Maghrib prayer, or the Isha, the last prayer of the day, the Salat has two times. It has the first time of the prayer and the last time in which is available to complete the prayer and from fiqh in the religion understanding in the religion is understanding the obligatory actions and deeds and those things which are liked or beloved uh mustahab and the different levels of deen the different levels of iman wa islam wa ihsan and in the hadith it mentions for us this hadith about the the fadl of amal the different levels and the greatness of different levels of worship an abi amr shaybani wa ismuhu sa'd ibn yas qala haddathni sahib hadhihi ad-dar wa ishara bi yadihi ila ad-dar abdullah ibn mas'ud qala sa'altu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ayya amal uhibbu ila allah azza wa jal qala salat ala waqtiha qultu thumma ay qala bir walidain qultu thumma ay qala jihad fi sabilillah qala hadathni bihinna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wala ustazadtuhu lazadani ruwahu bukhari wa muslim in the hadith that was related on uh narrated by Abi Amr al-Shaybani and his name is Sa'd ibn Iyas. He said that the person in that house told me and then he pointed to the house of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said I asked the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam 
which deed or which deeds are most beloved to Allah the Almighty and then he replied he said Salat ala waqtiha meaning prayer in its time and this has to do with the haq of Allah Azza wa Jal the, the Salat has to do with the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he said then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said then what? and the Prophet sallallahu responded by saying bir walidain meaning righteousness to parents or being obedient to parents and that right there shows us haq al-ibad that is the right of uh, the other of other people of individuals in this creation then he said which uh, then after that and then he said jihad afi sabilillah he said striving in the cause of Allah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he said Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said he said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told me this and if i would have asked for more he would have in- increased me with knowledge then this was collected in bukhari and muslim so in this hadith there are many many benefits but one thing i'd like to point out is as we've already mentioned just to em- for emphasis that the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned was the prayer, the Salat, showing us the greatness of Salat, the importance of Salat in, in the religion of Islam. And that that is the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's his right. Haq Allah al ibadi. You know, that's the right of Allah over the, his servants. So the first thing showing us that this is a high level of deen, a high level of the religion, is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way we fulfill that right, that obligation, is by praying the salat in its time. Then he asked, then what? And so then the second level, and the second thing that he mentioned, which shows us another level, is the haq. He said, uh, the, the right of the parents showing us that this is the right of the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the second level. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right is first and foremost, that we worship Him and Him alone. And part of that worship is that we fulfill the rights of others, whether it be our parents, whether it be our neighbors, whether it be uh, other Muslims, whether it be non-Muslims, you know, the, the, the rest of creation. Everyone has various rights over us and how we treat and our, 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 the way we interact with one another. So that shows us that that's after the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, then what? And he said, jihad fi sabilillah. And jihad fi sabilillah, that's the haq of Islam. To establish the religion of Islam. And it's legislated at certain times and it has certain pillars and requires that we have the ability to fulfill that great act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that act of worship is the haq of Islam to defend Islam, to establish Islam, etc. So those various maratib that we need to reflect on is first the haq of Allah, the right of Allah, then the right of his slaves, then the right of Islam, of establishing the religion of Islam. What we gain from this hadith is many, many benefits as Shaykh Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned. He said the first thing is that the most beloved deed to Allah, the Almighty, is the prayer during its time. Then uh, righteousness or obedience to parents, then jihad fi sabidillah. Alhamdulillah. And all of that follows after, of course and foremost, that a person has Iman. Meaning that the, the one who is a Buddhist or the one who's a Sikh or the one who's uh, of some other faith, and even if they fulfill that aspect, if they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they make the Salat, the Islamic Salat, it will not be accepted. 
or if they do the other acts, they're obedient to their parents. It won't be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the end, their deeds will be like the foam of the sea, be like dust in the wind. So after Iman is present, first and foremost, then those other things. So Iman is not mentioned here. This hadith mentions the ibadat furu'ihi wa asasaha. This mentions the branches of worship. And the but the assass of everything is Iman. So after Iman, after believing in Allah, knowing who Allah is, Tawheed, and the aspects of Iman, then these acts of ibadah, of the prayer, of being righteous to your parents and serving them, and jihad fi sabilillah, those things come into play after Tawheed and after Iman. And another benefit Shaykh Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, he said, what was meant by this question of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, what he meant by this is related to the deeds, the physical deeds, a'mal al badaniyah not the issues of the heart. So the prayer, these are physical aspects, although there's a component of the heart too, of khushu', khushu' and, 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 and so forth, and tutma'nina, uh, you know, having comfort in the prayer and doing each act in, in a state of, uh, uh, of peacefulness and so forth. But however, the asl is that the salat and these other acts are, are deeds which are physical deeds physical acts. So what was meant in the question of Abdullah uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu was related to the deeds, the physical deeds. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith illustrates for us that deeds and actions and ibadah are not on the same level and that some are better than others and they are their level of greatness is in accordance with how close they bring the slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how beloved those acts are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how beneficial those acts in wor of worship are and so that's very important for us to understand that deeds, they have different levels. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us that these acts of ibadah, are, they, their levels are in accordance with how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves these actions. So that's how we know the level of their greatness, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the prayer. So this is... Uh, greater than bitter walidain, than being obedient to your to your parents. That is a great act. It's a great act of ibadah. And it is beloved to Allah. But the Salat has more precedence. And another benefit we gain in this hadith is that this hadith affirms for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes and from among his attributes is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves he loves the mutatahirin, he loves the sabirin, he loves the mutawakkilin he loves those people who rely on him and trust in him he loves those people who who uh, who are the purified ones, he loves those people who are patient etc and he loves Ahlul Iman and, and the people of, who make Salat to him Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ha, has love for his creation in a manner that suits his majesty. So we don't know how the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, but we know that Allah loves his creation and that he loves 
he loves uh, those amongst his creation who are obedient to him and who love him and who have taqwa and so forth and who are patient and who have those other attributes which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are beloved to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the benefit of asking about knowledge and especially the different levels of knowledge and the different levels of benefit and another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the importance that sometimes it may be necessary to leave off asking about certain things from hikmah, from wisdom that maybe it might cause a difficulty on the people on the general community or something like this or the people themselves they may not be on that level to act upon that act of of uh, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or what have you or maybe it's something doubtful and maybe it's best left to keep silent about it at, at this time and how we get this how we understand this is because at the end of the hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said qal hadathani bihinna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa law istazadtuhu lazadani he said i asked the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about these things and if i would have asked him about more he would have increased me with knowledge he would have you know gave me more answers so he left off asking about certain things and sometimes that's from wisdom to leave off uh, asking excessive questions and those are some of the benefits of this hadith and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to do those deeds which love which he loves subhanahu wa ta'ala وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم